That is quite beautiful. Um, Alash performing live in the studio. Thank you all. That sounded quite nice. And here in the studio with me is uh, is Sean Quirk, the uh, interpreter and manager of the band. Howdy. Traveling along with them. And now um, we mentioned a little bit earlier they've got a gig tonight um, at a place called Dance New Amsterdam, which is at 280 Broadway on the second floor. Um, just off of Chamber Street. And uh, it's a 7.15 show, pretty early. But mm. uh, I go there right after work, I think. Doors <laughs> open at 6.30. And um, the one thing about it is that it's, it's going to be mostly in Russian. 
Well, the yeah, the talking part of it is going to be mostly in Russian. But for for those who you know kind of already know what's going on or don't really you know care, they'll find that out later. The music is all going to be in Tuvan anyway, so it doesn't matter right. if you speak Russian or English. It's going to be the music is the music, and it kind of is transcending language. So absolutely, we're inviting everyone to come down. It's going to be a great opportunity to hear Alash acoustically, actually, which it's it's always really really worthwhile to listen to this music without uh, without amplification. Right, and and uh, they are actually sort of from from like the base of Russia. That's, yeah. that's sort of uh, they're in that that little area between Russia and and Ch- and Mongolia, I guess, or yeah, China. Yeah, Tuva's uh, it's a well, it's a part of Russia technically. Right, I mean, right. You know, it's Tuvan language is totally different, and the culture and everything totally different. It's native, indigenous Siberian people, but yeah, you know, all the guys in the band have Russian passports, so mm-hmm. technically we're Russians. Now, um, uh, I'm pr- I'm wondering, am I pronouncing the name right, Alash or Alash? Either one is oh, fine. You know, okay. Alash sounds closer to the Tuvan, but I, you know, I say Alash in English. Okay. You know, even though I'm fluent in Tuvan, it's like walking around and saying, "Oh yeah, we had a lovely time in Pawi yesterday." You know, <laughs> Alash, true. Alash, tomato, tomato. Okay, you know. and and that's actually the name actually comes from the. Um, a, a river that runs through Tuva? Yeah, it's a, a river that's in the west of Tuva, one of the main rivers in the sort of watershed in the west of Tuva that eventually ends up draining down into the Yenisei uh, watershed. But a lot of our music is about mountains, it's about rivers, it's very uh, tied up with nature. There's Every album at least has one song about rivers, one song about mountains, mm-hmm. uh, one song about a tractor, and at least four or five <laughs> songs about horses and pretty girls. Um, but uh, yeah, Alash is, is a river in the West. Uh, the guys liked the name when they picked it back in 99 mm-hmm. uh, when the band was starting because it symbolizes uh, the way they feel about the music uh, being the current bearers of this tradition that's very ancient and that stretches very far back in the past. And right. they, they sort of uh, like to think about the flow of that river coming down from the mountains over a great length, sort of like the flow of the tradition coming from their ancestors, you know, through them and on into the future. Right. But now, am I wrong with the impression that it's it's mostly a farming community? Is it, you know, is Tuva a little more modern than, than we're all led to believe? Yeah, you know, it's, it's <laughs> rural, sure. I mean, it's, yeah. it's about the size of Montana, and, you know, it's pretty sparse population density-wise. But, you know, in the, in the central city, there's 100,000 people that live mm. there. Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, cars and, and, and apartment buildings and buses and, right. and cell phones. You know, you can go up outside the city 15 minutes up to a herding camp, and you can hang out there with a guy who's about to go cutting his hay for the fall, but first he's making sure to check his Facebook messages on his cell phone, <laughs> you know. And, you right, know. and I noticed a couple of the gentlemen had uh, cell phones when they came in, too, so, you know, we're definitely not uh, talking backwards here. No, you know? no, you know, people get that impression because the music is so ancient and because Tuva is so little known, you know, oftentimes right. when you're talking about introducing it, you're kind of highlighting the sort of, you know, the connection to the past and how well-preserved that is and everything there, but it's, it's you know, it's a global world, and, and Tuva is definitely a, a part of it. Yes. I'm speaking here with uh, Sean Quirk. I'm Irene Trudell here with the members of Alash in the studio. And uh, I wanted to mention also, too, that I'd heard a rather disturbing thing. You were the victims of theft. Yeah, we had all of our uh, instruments and robes and some of our mm. passports stolen. That's uh, really a tragedy. I mean, I've, I saw Alash the last time they were through and have pictures of their beautiful instruments and, you know, the, the heads of the, the headstocks of all the, uh, the fiddles and, and, you know, I don't even know the names of the instruments, um, but they, they had beautiful carvings. I remember one had a, a lovely horse head on mm. it. Yeah, the horse heads are real common. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're listening and you want to look at the pictures, you can go to our website at alashensemble.com. There's an instrument section there, and, it, and actually there are still pictures of the instruments that were uh, stolen. You know, we, we've slowly managed it. We've borrowed some. We've you know right. we've had some more made and that kind of stuff. But, yeah, those there's pictures of those beautiful uh, instruments on there, and they're still on the lamb. If anybody mm. sees any horse head fiddles running around, please, uh, please give us a Where call. Where did this happen? Uh, it was in uh, the parking lot of a Motel 6 on Avenida de Cesar Chavez, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, about oh. May 15th uh, of this spring. We were on a western, southwestern, sort of west coast tour. And it was our first time in Albuquerque, our first night there. We were just crashing for about six hours. Oh. We had a place to stay the next day, but we had a thing early in the morning. So we'd just driven in from Tucson, went to the motel, crashed there. We're woken up at six in the morning by the guy at the uh, desk saying, your car's been broken into. Oh. 
and they stole everything terrible. but the drum because they couldn't get the drum out of the Too window big. that they had broken. Oh, so that's terrible. It was a big karmic curveball, really. It was, right. <laughs> it was really a nasty one. Wow. Well, there's also um, there's a link on your website, uh, Alash. Ensemble.com to donate to help, uh, you know, help you guys buy all the, the things that, that were lost. Yeah, to, people you know, uh, really responded them. well at the time, and we used that. The guitar in there that we have now was replacing the stolen guitar. We used the donations to buy that, and, and basically the rest of it uh, went for that zither there that you mm. can see, uh, and uh, as well as some new robes. Uh, and some clothes for the guys. I mean, they were left without toothbrushes, oh. you know, at the time. I had brought my toothbrush in to the motel wow. that night, so I still had a toothbrush. But <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. That yeah. must have been a terrible shock at the time. Well, if folks want to donate, again, uh, alashensemble.com is where you'll find a link. Uh, it's right, just uh, go right to the home page, and there's a link about how the instruments were stolen and how to help. I'm wondering, uh, can we get them to play a couple more tunes? Yeah, let's say let's have two more songs. Uh, a couple more songs here. We'll see what uh, we're going to play, and then we'll give some information about that afterwards. But yeah, here's a couple more songs. Uh, first one's going to be one from the, our first album, Kata Chal. It's an old tried and true standby, and then uh, we'll see what we have for the second one. But this All first right. one's uh, called Kata Chal. Okay.
smaldı menden Ay yanmalık gördü o arba smaldı menden That again is the ensemble known as Alash playing live here on WFMU. And I'm here with their interpreter, Sean Quirk, who is uh, helping me to understand a little bit about their, their music and everything. This, this whole tradition of overtone singing is just mind boggling to me because it, there's so many, so many pitches involved with, with where the music can go. And, uh, I just wonder, um, do they learn this from a very young age? Um, is it sort of inbred in the culture? Yeah, it's. Um, people sometimes get the impression that this is only something that you know, a very select group of people who've been groomed, you know, since <laughs> since birth, you know, or since their grandparents were born or whatever, you know, can mm-hmm. do. But this is the folk music of Tuva, and even though right. some of the songs do have really sort of serious themes, you know, themes that are more like spiritual or internal or whatever. But you know, a lot of them, like we talked about, about horses and women and stuff. And the singing itself too is just a component of the of the overall way of perceiving and making sound that the Tuvan people have developed over the last who knows how many thousands of years of mm-hmm. living in a very close connection with nature and the sounds of nature being nomadic people. So, you know, each of these guys started body started when he was really young, but the rest of them started when they were maybe ten or eleven, twelve yeah. years old. And, but it's just really common. I mean. For instance, I've been living in Tuva for the last eight years. My wife is Tuvan, mm-hmm. and her cousin came to live with us for a couple of years. Right. And I would be throat singing running around the house. <laughs> and uh, one day, about six months after her cousin was came to live with us, I came home unexpectedly. He didn't think I was home. And I caught him in the bathroom throat singing. Oh. <laughs> he, you know, he was he was practicing, you know, because he's... And that's the thing, is people just hear it from their uncle or their, their, their grandpa or their dad or a friend or whatever. And then they just begin to practice to themselves. And it's really... Um, it's really just a natural thing. It's, it's not really taught so much in any kind of formal way. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's a lovely tradition. And we were just talking off mic about um, someone here who who sort of incorporates the, the whole overtone singing thing, David Hikes, who I've had on this program a couple of times. I just, I have to think that he would love to, you know, do something with these folks. 
I would say eventually our roads, uh, our paths will probably mm-hmm. cross. We've, you know, we've been very lucky in the 11 tours that we've done. We've, we've managed to cross paths with a lot of really interesting musicians. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we had an amazing collaboration with a band called The Horseflies in Ithaca. Oh, I know them, uh, yeah. They're awesome. Uh, last I almost week, brought their CD today. Oh, oh you should have. <laughs> we got one in the car. Ah. <laughs> um, we played also last week with a bassist and composer named Garth Stevenson, uh, who's based here in New York also. Mm-hmm. Um, his music is also very based sort of in nature, and uh, you know we, we had a lovely collaboration with him. So, you know, the thing about this music is... and. Part of it is because each of the members of Alash is such an excellent musician, but also the music, even though it's very exotic and very strange, it has this amazing flexibility mm-hmm. where Alash finds a way to sort of to flow it into sort of any music that they're with, and it, it, it's really amazing because, you know, at first I think people hear Tuvan Throat singing, or you know, 20 years ago when it first started coming to the United States, it's being built just sort of on the fantastic nature of the throat singing, right? Which is great, but it leads people to think that it's a music with not a lot of opportunity. It's just a one-trick pony, as it mm-hmm. were. And, you know, it's kind of our job 20 years later as the second generation of singers who can no longer capitalize merely on the strange nature of it. You know, we really have to show that this is a, a, a fully cohesive, you know, sound perception and, and way of making music, uh, you know, that's totally independent, but that, that also can fully stand up with any other right. style of music and, and join together and blend together and make awesome new things. Right. Well, I know uh, they've done some some collaborating with uh, Bella Fleck and Victor Wooten uh, on a Christmas album, mm-hmm. and I think Victor does a he's a, making a guest appearance on one of the tracks on the album here. That's right. Uh, the first instrumental mm-hmm. piece uh, that we played today, Bura, uh, Vic uh, plays on that. Uh, uh, it's the last track on our new album, Bura. That album was recorded at, at Victor's house in the basement. Oh, very nice. Uh, the engineer was the guy who does the front of house sound uh, for the Flectones. He's also oh, a recording engineer. Yeah, Richard, yeah. yes. Yeah, amazing, excellent guy. He's kind of like our, our band uncle. Oh, great. You know, he <laughs> ke- keeps us in line and takes care of us. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a deep connection with them there because they did stuff with Congarol Andar in the 90s who was, you know, he was one of these uh, front, you know, pioneers who brought throat singing out to the world world yeah and we ended up hooking up with them and yeah first it was the christmas album and then we did some tours with them you know related to the christmas oh, album yeah and then uh, in may of 2010 we went down to nashville uh, with richard and victor and then we recorded the album that's here today right. on the console oh very cool and now um they don't specifically listen to to uh folk music from home they they listen to other things as well right oh yeah we listen to everything i mean you know the, musically the inside of our car is like the super chinese buffet you know we got <laughs> we got we got the hamburgers we got the you know we got the loot noodles we got the salad because we're listening to all kinds of things you know like i mentioned the horseflies we just were listen, we listen to tuvan uh rock and roll music we listen to johnny cash we listen to beatboxing mm-hmm. uh we listen to classical orchestras we listen to gospel music you know I, I, irish music, bluegrass, just anything we can get our ears on, as it were. Right. The guys are, are really just avid listeners and love to listen to new stuff. What's what's a current favorite on the tour? Um, let's see, what are we listening to a lot on this tour? Uh, Sainko Namtalak, who's a, she's a Tuvan uh, singer originally, but she's gone off into this whole very avant-garde thing. Mm. She lives in Europe. Sainko Namtalak is amazing. And she does this one album where she's telling a story. It's a Tuvan story about a spring. How it, you know, it's a legend. It's a myth. and But it's set to, to music. And it's very sort right. of very forward thinking. And she's this amazing, amazing vocalist. Not so much of a throat singer, just a regular vocalist. We've been listening to that. Um, what else? A lot of Indian music on this mm-hmm. tour. The Indian uh, Ali Farkature is, is oh, constantly yeah. on the playlist. Uh, Bubakar Traore. Um, yeah, more than more than I can count. You know, <laughs> seems like seems like every tour there's a few albums that are coming in more than others. But maybe we're not driving as much this year. I don't know. We got a pretty even spread. <laughs> oh well. Hey, I should mention again the gig that's uh, tonight, which is um, it is held at the. Uh, Oh, where did I... Dance New Amsterdam, dance, it's called. Yeah. yeah, Dance New Amsterdam. It's on Chambers Street in Manhattan, and uh, it's a 280... Actually, 280 Broadway, second floor, but you enter on Chambers Street. And uh, for information, uh, 212-227-9856. Show is at uh, 715. 
odd time to start, but <laughs> but doors open at 6.30. Um, and it's run by something called the Snob Project. Do we know what that is? Um, luckily, I uh, no longer do the booking for the band. Ah. I'm, just, I'm just the road manage, manager, so I'm, uh, you know, because I spend most of my time in a log cabin in Tuva as well. But uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to finding out who these uh, Snob Project people mm. are as well. We're very grateful that, uh, uh, you know, it's it actually the whole thing came about because the very first time Alash came to the United States, we were sponsored by a program called the Open World Cultural Leader, Leaders Program, which uh, sponsored by the Library of Congress. They brought us over there, and unfortunately, due to all the nasty budget cuts that are happening, I guess that program is going to be put away, which uh, is really, really unfortunate. That's a shame. Yeah. Uh, but the woman who was in charge of that program uh, is originally from Russia. She lives here in New York for many years, but she's she's hooked it up. So, mm. I, you know, I, but I, I, I can't tell you. you if you <laughs> okay. want to know what the Snob Project is, you got to come well, down. Well, I would say go to the show anyway, <laughs> whatever it is. It, I, it is going to be a bit in Russian, but I, I think that it'll be, you know, it will transcend the music will all the be language. the same, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I'm here with uh, Sean Kirk, and I'm Irene Trudell. The members of Alash are in the other room. Would they be willing to do Let's one do more? Let's do some more music, yeah. Yeah. One more song sound good? Sure. Yeah, that would be lovely. And, uh, I think this is going to be one about, let's see, maybe about, yeah, looks like it's going to be one about uh, good horses and oh, pretty okay. girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know, before they start, I should ask um, I should ask about the instruments that they're playing because uh, I, don't, I don't exactly, they look like... Um, They've got some uh, some strings on them and that sort of thing, but uh, I really have no idea what they are. So maybe let's go from left to right because people will hear that in their field of uh, sure. listening. Uh, well, in, in this song, we're only actually going to have one instrument. Oh, okay. uh, it's a plucked instrument called the Dosh Palur. It's kind of like a Tuvan banjo. Right. You know, it's a skin box with skin on each side and a and neck. And it's square you know. rather than round. It's square rather than round. And like, a, But you can make them round, too. Of course, um, yeah. You could make them pent- pentagonal, I guess, if you wanted to. I don't know sure. how it would sound, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and we heard uh, from left to right earlier, we heard an instrument called the bazanchi that was on the far left. That's an instrument is bowed. It's got right. four strings, and the bow actually has two separate strings, and they go, each string is responsible for one pair mm-hmm. of, of strings that are on the instruments. So the, so the bow is actually woven through the strings, ah. like a Chinese erhu, actually. Right, but right. the erhu has two strings. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the agil, we heard, that's the instrument with, it's a two stringed, uh, it's called the horse head fiddle. It's got a horse's head carved on top. Some people might be familiar with the Moran Hur, which is a Mongolian modernized version of this instrument uh-huh. that has more of a wooden box body where the agil still has, it's like a big wooden spoon with skin stretched over the, the face. And then, of course, we've got Ayan, our percussionist, who's got his big kengirge, which is a drum that came in with the Buddhists in the 18th century, uh, as well as some horse, the, horse gear on top right. there, which we're going to hear in this song. Huge sound to it. <laughs> All right, well, let us hear from Alash one more time on WFMU. Oh, 
Members of Alash, one last time, performing live in the studio here. I know. I noticed that they, um, Sean, they do, they do this sort of a like a palate cleanser at the end of the song. <laughs> what, what is that exactly? Uh, it's you, sort of like a whoosh. Shoop is what they're yeah, saying. Um, it's what you say in tuva to a horse when you want to make it go faster. Ah. So you know, in English, we translate it as a giddy up. But, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a multi-purpose, uh, you know, vocalization. It can sort of, you know, say I'm, I'm handing you a cup of tea and you're turned the other way. I can say, shoo, shoo. And, you know, that means like, oh, hey, I'm handing you. Or, or you know, it's kind of like Charles Mingus, you know, when he go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, you could say it in the middle of a song, but right. it comes a lot of times at the end of the song, especially when you have like a solo or something with throat singing where the audience is just so entranced, they don't realize when it ends. And so the singer will go, shoo, you know, as kind of a clue, <laughs> like, okay, it's, you know, I'm done now. Oh, yes. Well, thank you, everybody, for playing today. This was a really lovely set. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, just uh, one more time, they are playing tonight at the Dance New Amsterdam Studio 2 at 280 Broadway, second floor, but you enter on Chambers Street. And uh, doors open at 6.30. 7.15 is when the show starts. And... Uh, I thank you, Sean, for bringing them down here. Well, on behalf of uh, Ayan and Body and uh, Ayanol and Natin, we thank you. Uh, it's good to see you again, Irene, and we're, we're always happy to be back here. Excellent. And we'll, uh, we'd like to play one more track uh, from the brand new album, Bura. And uh, this one is called Bai Taiga. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is sort of a, a longer yeah, piece. It's, uh, very sort of meditative type of uh, piece. It's a song about a mountain in the west of Tuba that includes uh, uh, some lyrics about uh, singing praises to the master spirit uh, mm -hmm. of that mountain. So this is kind of the, the opposite end of the uh, you know fast horses and pretty women situation. This is a very sort of deep song about this beautiful and great mountain in the west. All right. Thank you once again, everybody. And uh, here is Alash from their brand new CD, Bura on WFMU. And that is brand new from the band known as Alash, who are my uh, guests in the studio today. And uh, joining me uh, to talk with them is Sean Quirk. Howdy, Irene. Hello. Sean is uh, going to do all the interpretation because these gentlemen, uh, they have some English uh, language uh, skills, but it's a little uncertain sometimes. Not so. quite ready for radio yet. Yeah. Right. Maybe next year. <laughs> We're getting there. They're getting there, yes. Would you like to, would you please introduce everybody for me? Sure. Uh, the members of Alash are Natin Chodu, uh, Ayanol Sam, Badi Darju Andar, and Ayan Shirajik. Uh, they're all award winning uh, professional music uh, musicians from Tuba. They're some of the best musicians of their generation, and uh, we've been touring around for about uh, six years now. So. Wow. Wow. And uh, this is uh, their second or third album uh, that, that's come out? Basically, it's our second album. It's our second... Right. Second uh, English uh, language yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. release. And um, and you've also been touring around a number of places, including uh, there's a show tonight that we'll mention in a little mm -hmm. while. But I would love to hear everybody play. Um, 
Can you introduce the first piece for us? Yeah, well, we're just going to open it up with a, uh, a song that kind of showcases what uh, many people consider to be the sort of most spectacular feature of Tuvan music, which is, of course, uh, what we so awkwardly call in the English language throat singing. Throat singing, yes. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to take it from there uh, with that a cappella piece and do a couple of songs from the new album. So Lovely. Enjoy. All right. Gentlemen. And here is a lash for us. Mm-hmm. 